doesn't God pardon fallen angels and Satan? To answer this, we need to unravel three intricate puzzles. Let's simplify them and explore their interconnections. The first puzzle, if Satan was crafted entirely good by God, how could he perform a sinful act? Imagine you construct a flawless robot program to do good deeds. One day, the robot does something horrific. You'd question how this could occur if it was flawlessly made. This is the enigma with Satan. How did an impeccably created angel decide to do evil? It's often proposed that Satan, though created good, had free will. This autonomy allowed him to make decisions independently, including the decision to rebel. It's not a defect in God's creation but a part of the liberty granted to all sentient beings. Before this rebellion and fall, Satan, known as Lucifer, had a significantly different character compared to his later portrayal as the adversary and enemy of God and humanity. Before his fall, Lucifer was seen as a powerful and beautiful angel. God created him as a being of light and beauty. The name Lucifer itself means Lightbringer or Morning Star, indicating his original bright and cheerful nature, Lucifer held a high position in heaven. He was one of the cherubim, an angel often associated with directly serving God. His role was significant and respected among the heavenly beings. While the Bible does not provide extensive details about Lucifer's nature before the fall, there are passages often interpreted as references to him, for example, Ezekiel 28 verses 2-5 describes a figure who is often associated with Lucifer, You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God, every precious stone was your covering. You were the anointed cherub who covers, I established you, you were on the holy mountain of God, you walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created, till iniquity was found in you. This scripture provides insights into the nature of Lucifer's rebellion and its consequences, helping us understand the broader topic of the unforgivable nature of the sin of fallen angels. What do you think led to the transformation of Lucifer, a being of light and beauty, into Satan, associated with darkness and evil? These highlight Lucifer's beauty and wisdom. He was adorned with precious stones and had a special place in God's creation, indicating his high status and the esteem in which he was held. Lucifer was the epitome of perfection, full of wisdom and beauty. This description implies that before he went against God, Lucifer was a perfect creation without any faults. As an anointed cherub, Lucifer had a unique privileged position in the presence of God. This role signifies high trust and honor in the heavenly realm. Despite his initial perfection, sin and evil were found in Lucifer. This suggests that the root of his downfall was something within him, traditionally interpreted as pride and a desire to be equal to or above God. Lucifer's fall emphasizes the concept of free will in the Bible. Despite being created perfect and placed in a position of honor, he chose to rebel against God. This choice reflects the exercise of free will, which is fundamental to the nature of all intelligent beings created by God, including angels. Unlike humans, angels are believed to have a complete understanding of their actions and the consequences thereof. When Lucifer and his followers rebelled, they did so with full awareness. This irrevocable decision made in the light of complete knowledge is a key reason why their sin cannot be forgiven. The sin of Lucifer and the fallen angels is not one of ignorance or weakness but a deliberate and conscious rebellion against God. It's seen as a final turning away from the Creator. Unlike human sin, which often stems from ignorance or weakness and can be repented, in the context of divine justice, the unforgivable nature of the fallen angel's sin reflects God's righteous judgment, their sin is a direct and knowledgeable rebellion against God's sovereignty and holiness. God's mercy is extended to those who err in ignorance and seek repentance, a condition not applicable to Lucifer and the fallen angels, the redemption narrative is centered around Jesus Christ and is tailored explicitly for humanity. Humans, unlike angels, sin without complete knowledge and have the capacity for genuine repentance and change. This distinction is crucial in understanding why redemption is offered to humans but not fallen angels, the primary cause of Lucifer's fall was pride. Isaiah 14 verses 12 to 15 is another passage often linked to Lucifer's rebellion, how you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High. Lucifer's ambition to be like or above God led to his downfall. His desire to ascend to God's level or to be worshipped like God was his undoing. This pride and rebellion transformed him from a cherished cherub into Satan, the adversary and accuser. After his rebellion, Lucifer was cast out of heaven, becoming Satan, the leader of the fallen angels. 
This fall marked a complete transformation from being of light and beauty to one associated with darkness and evil. To understand why God doesn't forgive fallen angels and Satan, it's essential to know if angels can repent. As a result, we would be looking into the nature of angels, the nature of sin and repentance, and how these differ from human experiences, angels and humans are distinct creations of God. They are spiritual beings created by God, each with unique roles and characteristics. Angels are in God's presence and serve Him directly. Humans have a more complex relationship with God, involving faith, sin, redemption, and the potential for a personal and intimate relationship with God through Jesus, praise Him, all His angels, praise Him, all His heavenly hosts. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for at His command they were created. Psalm 148 verses 2-5. This tells us that angels, like everything else in creation, were made by God's command. Unlike humans, who are physical and spiritual, angels are purely spiritual beings. The Bible calls them, ministering spirits sent out to serve for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation, Hebrews 1 verse 14. This spiritual nature allows them to exist in the presence of God and fulfill their roles as His messengers and servants. Angels are spiritual beings and do not have physical bodies like humans. While angels are spiritual beings, they can appear in human form. Genesis 19 verses 1 to 5 recounts angels visiting Lot in Sodom, appearing as men. Angels are often said to look unique, mysterious, and impressive. For example, in Isaiah 6 verse 2, in the Bible, there's a description of seraphim, a kind of angel, having six wings, showing how extraordinary they are. Angels have various roles, including messengers of God, Luke 1 verses 26 to 38, where Gabriel announces the birth of Jesus to Mary, protectors, Psalm 91 verse 11. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways, and worshippers of God, Revelation 5 verses 11 to 12, angels are in a hierarchy, as suggested in Jude 1 verse 9, which refers to Michael as the archangel. Different other types of angels include seraphim, known for their worship of God as seen in Isaiah 6, and cherubim, who guarded the entrance to the Garden of Eden, Genesis 3 verse 24. When angels made their choice to follow or rebel against God, they did so with full knowledge and understanding. Humans, however, often make moral decisions with limited knowledge and are prone to error and sin. In this case, they possess free will, as evidenced by the rebellion of Lucifer, later Satan, and other angels. This rebellion is interpreted as referring to Satan's fall. Angels possess greater knowledge and wisdom than humans, but they are not omniscient, all-knowing, like God. 1 Peter 1 verses 11 to 12 suggests that angels are curious about human salvation, indicating that there are things we, as humans, do not know. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves but you when they spoke of the things that have now been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Even angels long to look into these things, angels interact with humans as God's messengers or agents. They provide guidance, deliver messages, offer protection, and sometimes intervene in human affairs as directed by God. An example is in Acts 12 verses 6 to 11, where an angel helps Peter escape prison, angels exhibit emotions. There is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents, Luke 15 verse 10. This indicates that angels rejoice in the fulfillment of God's will. Angels, being spiritual beings, are immortal. They do not experience death in the same way humans do. However, their existence is not independent. They are created beings who owe their existence to God. Despite their power and knowledge, angels are not all-powerful or all-knowing. They serve under God's authority and act according to His will. They are not to be worshipped, as Revelation 22 verses 8 to 9 makes clear when an angel tells John to worship God, not him, I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I had heard and seen them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who had been showing them to me. But he said to me, Don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and with your fellow prophets and with all who keep the words of this scroll. Worship God. Angels play a role in the story of human salvation. They are seen announcing the birth of Jesus, protecting and guiding key figures, and proclaiming the glory of God. How do you think the role of angels in the story of human salvation influences our understanding of their nature and purpose? In the end, the fate of the fallen angels, those who rebelled against your glory, remains a complex aspect of our faith. We acknowledge that these beings, once pure and close to you, chose a path away from your light. Their actions, born of free will, led them away from your grace. In this, we see a reflection of the importance of free will, a gift you have given to all your creation, and the responsibility that comes with it. Lord, teach us through this the value of our choices and the consequences they carry. Let us learn from the fall of these angels the importance of humility, obedience, and a heart that constantly seeks your face.
May their story remind us to remain vigilant in our faith and steadfast in our devotion to you. We also pray, Heavenly Father, for the grace to accept the mysteries of your kingdom. While we seek understanding, we acknowledge that some things are known only to you. In this acceptance, let us find peace and trust in your ultimate wisdom and justice. I end the story of the fallen angels, we see the manifestation of your justice, a crucial and perfect aspect of your nature. It reminds us that your love is not permissive, but it is also bound in righteousness and truth. Help us, Lord, to embrace your justice as we embrace your mercy, understanding that both are expressions of your unchanging love. For moreover, we pray for the strength to resist the temptations and deceptions that led these angels astray. Protect us, O Lord, from the snares of the evil one and guide us in your light. Equip us with the armor of faith, the shield of truth, and the sword of your word, so we may stand firm against all spiritual challenges. As we reflect on the fate of the fallen angels, let it stir in us a deeper love for you, a more profound appreciation for your grace, and a stronger commitment to live in your righteousness. May it inspire us to seek you with all our hearts, to live lives that honor you, and to extend your love and forgiveness to others. Finally, Lord, we pray for all who struggle with doubts and questions about faith. May your Holy Spirit provide comfort and guidance, turning their hearts towards the light of your truth. Help us all to grow in our understanding of your way and in our love for you and for each other. In all things, we submit to your will, trusting in your goodness and your perfect plan for all creation. We offer this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. How does the story of the fallen angels influence your understanding of free will and its consequences?